Hey, remember in my last video when I said I was going to move regular videos to Fairly Well Broccoli and keep FW Sickle strictly for vlogs? Well, I'm not going to do that. Just forget all about it because I don't feel like doing that with Fairly Well Broccoli. It can just sit there until it gets used again. I'm happy on FW Sickle and I'm staying here. So, with that said, I have decided to do a little bit of a series of videos that I hope you like. And what this series is going to be is of the 23 questions from Chuck Klosterman. And if you are not familiar with Chuck Klosterman's 23 questions, it is from Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs, his book, Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. And what he says is that these are the 23 questions that he asks everybody he knows to decide if he can really love them. I don't understand that concept at all, but I do like the questions. They're thought-provoking, they're interesting, and they make you um, really consider options. But at the same time, they're completely preposterous, and this stuff would never happen. So what I'm deciding to do is I'm going to answer, like, two or three questions per video. It just depends on how long it takes me to answer them. Um, so with that said, I'm going to jump right into question number one. Let us assume you met a rudimentary magician. Let us assume he can do five simple tricks. He can pull a rabbit out of his hat. He can make a coin disappear. He can turn the ace of spades into the joker card and two other in a similar vein. There, these are his only tricks and he can't learn anymore. He can only do these five. However, it turns out he's doing these five tricks with real magic. It's not an illusion. He can actually conjure the bunny out of the ether, and he can move the coin through space. He's legitimately magical, but extremely limited in scope and influence. Would this person be more impressive than Albert Einstein? My answer is no. I would find Albert Einstein more impressive, and here's why. I'm working under the assumption here that this magical person is given this magic as like a trait. Like I have blue eyes and I have brown hair. Those are my traits. This man has magic. Didn't really work for it. Doesn't really have to work to better his magic. Uh, unlike many television shows about magic where the harder you work the better it is. I'm just assuming because he can do these five tricks. These are the five tricks he knows how to do. These are the only magic he has. He didn't work for this magic and he does, he, he does not work to make this magic better. Albert Einstein, yes, he was born with inherent in intellectual abilities that not everybody has for whatever, however, you know, I'm not going to lie and say I know everything about it. I don't know crap. All I know is that he was born smarter than everybody else. But at the same time, to increase his intellectual abilities, he studied and he worked hard to get to that. And that is something more admirable to me than just having magic that you just have. Question number two. Let us assume a fully grown, completely healthy Clydesdale horse has his hooves shackled to the ground while his head is held in place with thick rope. He is conscious and standing upright, but completely immobile. And let us assume that for some reason, every political prisoner on earth, as cited by Amnesty International, will be released from captivity, captivity if you can kick this horse to death in less than 20 minutes. You are allowed to wear steel-toed boots. Would you attempt to do this? Now, I wholeheartedly agree with his answer, and I can't think of a better way to word it, so I'm just going to read you his answer, and you're going to have to live with that. His answer is, no, because a political prisoner should be freed because it is proven that they were wrongly jailed, not because I kicked the shit out of some horse. And the last question for today, question number three. Let us assume there are two boxes on a table. In one box, there's a relatively normal turtle. In the other box, Adolf Hitler's skull. You have to select one of these items for your home. If you select the turtle, you can't give it away, and you have to keep it alive for two years. If either of these parameters are not met, you will be fined $999 by the state. If you select Adolf Hitler's skull, you are you are required to display it in a semi-prominent location in your living room for the same amount of time. Although, you will be paid a stipend, stipend? You will be paid $120 per month for doing so. Displaying, display of the skull must be apolitical. Which option do you select? I say the skull, and here's why. Number one. I've had turtles in my house before, and it's I don't like them. They stink. 
their tanks are loud, they bite you, I don't like it. And then the second reason, because it's an apolitical thing, uh, nobody has to know that it's Hitler's skull, and I'm getting paid to have it in my house. So where's the bad there? I am asking you to answer the questions yourself. I'm going to post them downstairs in the little box, and you can answer via video response or just in a comment, and you don't have to answer it all if you don't want to, but I'm interested in finding out everybody else's views on stuff. So like I said, there's 23 questions. These were the first three. Um, I'm going to do at least one of these a week. I know I fucking always say, oh, I'm going to do, I, I never do it, but you know what? Just have a good day. See you later.